Masculinity is not something given to you, but something you gain. And you gain it by winning small battles with honor. Great men of the past are examples of the virtues and actions of true manhood. In his new book, best-selling author Stephen Mansfield identifies the way manly men are supposed to live. And please welcome back to the 700 Club, a manly man himself, Stephen Mansfield. Great to see hey, you. Good to see you, Joe. I hope my wife is watching now that I'm actually a manly man. <laughs> I am loving your book, and I love the subtitle, An Utterly Invigorating Guide to Being Your Most Masculine Self. Yes. I mean, obviously, Stephen, you're having some fun, yeah. fun with this, but this is, I've been reading this, this is really a serious call to men to, to man up. What's the goal? What's the goal? Well, my goal is to change uh, the understanding of manhood from macho things, which is what it usually is, you know, guys and cigars and motorcycles and body hair and muscles, and just say, you know, it really is a matter of character, and it really is a matter of the doing. We had an awesome men's uh, movement here not too long ago in this country, and it was great, but it was very therapeutic. It was very much about healing the soul. We needed that at the time. Right. The millennials are saying, just tell me what to do, and so that's what I'm focusing on. Interesting. Now, you write, a woman simply is, but a man must become. What do you mean by that? Well, that's actually a quote from Camille Paglia, who's a female scholar, believe it or not, and, and not, a, not a religious person at all. And she says, what a woman uh, is comes about by virtue of her biology. You know, she simply grows and then she has a baby or she falls in love with a man and things sort of happen naturally in moving her towards womanhood. But a man can be consistent with his body and his, and his biology and so on and become something very, very different than a good man. He can, he can use that strength, uh, he can use the, the, all that he has as a, as a, as a man uh, to do a lot of damage. So he, a man, she's saying, has to be taught manhood. He has to be taught mm -hmm. the version of manhood you want him to live out. And it's true, if we just let young boys grow, they'll become men, but they not, may not become noble men. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we're trying to focus on. Well, you have four maxims in your book. Uh, they're called the... Um Mansfield's Manly Maxims, Maxims I believe. Maxims of Manly Men. Yes. And uh, the first one, number one, is manly men do manly things. Does that mean they hunt, they fish, they grow beards? Uh, I know it means more than that, right? Sure. What we're trying to put the emphasis on is the doing. We're all for you know, soul care and therapy and whatever people need. But the doing is about, as I'll say a little later, taking responsibility. It's about the matters of duty. It's about the matters of what it means for a man to tend what he has to tend, to be who he's called to be, to assume the duties that God's given him by virtue of being a man. Mm. And so it's about, we really measure it by the externals. And I think that for men, when you put the emphasis on feeling, they get sort of frustrated and don't right. know what to do. But if you say, here's what you do, that engages them. Mm. And so I'm taking a different approach. Now, second maxim, manly men tend their fields. What does this mean? Well, yeah, every man has a field he's responsible for. For a college kid, it can be a rusty car, a dorm room, and a couple of textbooks. Mm. Uh, but for those of us who are older, of course, it's family, it's house, it's, it's, it's how their wives are doing, how their children are spiritually and emotionally. Whatever it is that God has given to you, whatever it is the field that you are assigned at a given period of your life, that's what you're responsible to tend. And manhood's measured by how you take care of, nurture, pastor, shepherd, lead that field. Now, there are two more maxims we can make people buy the book and find sure. out those, or Please we can talk do. about them right now. <laughs> so why don't we just skip this from now, you know, Stephen, I have a lot of single girlfriends who are saying, where are the manly men? Do we need to take up bow hunting, fishing? Where are they hiding? Well, my, uh, my, one of my favorite authors says, you ask where the men are, I tell you, you've turned them into women. Ooh. And uh, part of the issue is where, is the, where are the older men who are nurturing, drawing up, summoning up, and initiating the younger men uh, who are creating a culture in which you create masculinity. And I, I use an illustration, simple one in the book, of my father just when I was maybe three or four began to say, open the door for your mother. Open the door. He would just remind me. Open and and just it, it began to be branded in my soul. Mom could open the door better than I could. I mean, I'm this tall, <laughs> but it, began, it sort of got burned into my soul. A man takes care of the women in his life, mm. you know, honors them and so on. And that was the approach. Mm. My father that wasn't even a good. believer. Yeah, soul just to hear exactly. That. Or if I spoke inappropriately mm. and say he say a man, he would he well he would say you know, don't speak to your mother that way. Then he would say, but a man doesn't speak to a woman that way. And so he was mentoring me, and then that's. Men are only going to come from a manly culture, and that's what we have to create. What, <clears throat> excuse me, what I love about your, your book is you have so many examples of manly men in your book, Winston Churchill, King David. Tell us, who's your favorite? 
I think the, my favorite person is Winston Churchill. I wrote a book on him years ago. And the story in there I like the most is Churchill's father hated him mm. and re really despised him. Oh. But Churchill decided when the man died that he was going to follow up his legacy. He said, I'm, I'm going to live out his legacy. I'm not going to retreat in bitterness. I'm going to take the best of who he was and go forward with it. And with many of us having fathers who were disappointments or being wounded by parents or, or you know, coaches, what have you, it's, it was a real good character lesson for me. I think it will be for other men, too. That could have really destroyed him. And then, of course, King David, the last thing he said to his son Solomon was, be strong and be a man. Show yourself a man. Show yourself that a man. That great phrase from the King James. Yeah. Show yourself a man. That was his final words to his son. There are only about two places in the Bible where someone is using the word man and they mean the characteristics of a man. One is King David to his son and the other is when God shows up to Job and says, stand up and prepare to present yourself as a man. Yeah, because King David wasn't that. saying to Solomon, be a male. No, no. He's already, already male. A male. Do the things that are yeah. the things a man does. And he had obviously taught them what those were, or the sentence wouldn't have made any sense. Yeah. So, Stephen, you're really hoping that the book of Manly Men will, will inspire a movement. Do no. uh, you think this could happen? I do. I do, because I think the book is primarily oriented towards the millennials, young men. They are virally oriented with the internet and technology that we have, and I think they're desperate for a movement. And my solution in the book is build a culture locally that draws up the best in men, teaches them who they're called to be. So I think a movement's going to come out of it. I know. Me and all my single girlfriends, we, we're, we're going to give this to May some you of you each find a manly man. <laughs> We're praying for this book to do well. Thanks, so, Stephen. <laughs> well, guys, you need to put this book on your Christmas wish list. And ladies, this is a great stocking stuffer for the men in your life. And again, it's called Mansfield's Book of Manly Men, and it's available wherever books are sold. Stephen, God bless you. Thank Thanks you very so much. much.